Hello guys, and welcome to another calculus video. Today we're going to be looking at these two integrals, which are part of a larger set of integrals. Um, so without any further ado, let's just jump right into the video. These integrals are called the Borwein integrals. Uh, here's part of the uh, Wikipedia page on these integrals. And the cool thing about them is that the first... Uh, I believe like 6 or so, goes straight to pi over 2, and after that, the value, as you can see, is out by only a small amount. So the first integral is the Dirichlet integral, and then each integral after that, you're just multiplying by sine of x over 3 over x over 3, um, and then the next one, x over 5 over x over 5, and you just keep multiplying that, and all the way up to uh, sine of x over 13 over x over 13, um, uh, you're multiplying that on the inside of the integrand. Uh, they will all go to pi over 2, but once you hit sine of x over 15 over x over 15, now it's pi over 2 minus this incredibly small number, as you can see right here. So uh, this, the reason that it converges to pi over 2 for every, uh, every single one of these, except uh, un until you reach 15, has to do with the Fourier transform and some very, very complicated concepts. Uh, so we're not going to go into those right now, but we are going to go ahead and take a look at the second and third Borwein integrals. So we're going to be evaluating this one and this one today. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Now let's talk about the identities that we're going to be using in order to solve this. The first identity is the sine product identity, which basically can be proved just using the, uh, the complex definition of sine. You know, it'll just look like this, e to the i b minus e to the negative i b all over 2i. And when you multiply that out, you will end up finding out that this is actually the same thing as 1 half cosine of a minus b minus cosine of a plus b. So that's pretty simple. And the other one that we will end up needing is uh, sine a cosine b uh, same idea, same exact situation here. This is going to end up being 1 half sine a plus b plus sine a minus b. And the last one we will need to be using is the mass identity, which I've used in another video. It's incredibly useful for everything. Uh, it basically says for the integral from 0 to infinity of f of x g of x dx, this is the same as the integral from 0 to infinity of the Laplace transform of f of x times the inverse Laplace transform of g of x. It's actually super easy to prove. Um, I'm not going to do it in this video, but you can go check out my other video where I did prove it, um, which I'll link in a card right here. And so yeah, let's go ahead and start evaluating these integrals. So the first one we're going to evaluate is the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x times sine of x over 3. Now x times x over 3 is just x squared over 3 dx. So the first thing we're going to do is bring this 3 to the top, and then what we're going to do is substitute x equals 3u. This means that dx equals 3 du. So we're going to end up with 9 from that du integral from 0 to infinity sine of 3u sine of u over 9u squared. And so this 9 is going to end up canceling with that 9, and we'll just end up with this right here. Next, we're going to be using the sine product identity. So we're going to end up multiplying by 1 half, integral from 0 to infinity, and then we have cosine a minus b, just sine of 2u, or not sine, cosine of 2u, sorry about that, minus cosine a plus b, which is going to be cosine of 4u. That's all over u squared. Next, we're going to take the Laplace transform of cosine 2u minus cosine 4u. So, yeah. And so that's going to end up being u over u squared plus 4 minus u over u squared plus 16. Pretty simple right there. And we're going to take the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over u squared. And just using our basic rules, uh, we can figure out that that is just going to be u. So in this case, it's the same thing as taking the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared, which would just be t, 
and but we're just keeping the variable the same everywhere here. So that's just going to end up being u. So we'll just multiply u squared, u squared du. All right. Now, in order to finish out uh, this integral, we're going to add 4 and then subtract 4 and then add 16 and subtract 16. So what we're going to end up with is 1 half times the integral from 0 to infinity. This first part, u squared plus 4 over u squared plus 4, is just 1. Then we're going to end up with minus 4 over u squared plus 4. Then minus 1, same thing, plus 16 over u squared plus 4. So this is going to end up canceling right here. And then we'll just use our basic arctangent integration. Remember that the integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared dx equals 1 over a arctangent of x over a. That can just be proved by differentiating. So we're going to end up with 1 half times, um, I'll do this, oh sorry, this shouldn't be a 4, this should be a 16 right here. I'll do this term first. Uh, so we'll end up with 4 arctangent of u over 4 minus 2 arctangent of u over 2. Evaluate at infinity and at 0. So at infinity and 0, these are going to both be pi over 2 and then both be 0. And so at the 0, that's just going to disappear. And at infinity, we're going to have 2 pi minus 1 pi, which is just pi, and then divided by 2. So that's going to be pi over 2. All right, let's move on to the third Borwein integral. So that third Borwein integral is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x times sine of x over 3 times sine of x over 5 all over x cubed over 15. Then we're going to bring that 15 to the front as we did before. And then dx. All right. Now we're going to do something pretty similar. We're going to set x equals 15. Um, I don't want to use u. Let's use something else. Let's use, I don't know, v. That means that dx equals 15 dv. So we're going to end up with 15 squared, which is 225, integral from 0 to infinity of sine of 15v, sine of 5v, sine of 3v, all over, then this is going to be 15 cubed v, so we're just going to end up with 1 over 15 on the outside, v cubed dv, all right. Now let's go ahead and combine or simplify these last two using our identity. So 1 over 15 integral from 0 to infinity of sine of 15v. Actually, I'll make this 1 over 30 right here because we're dividing by 2 to uh, use the identity. So this is going to then be cosine a minus b, which is cosine of 2v minus cosine a plus b, cosine of a, b, all over v cubed dv. Now we're going to use the other, ident the other identity, which is sine a cosine b. And so we're going to end up with dividing by 2 again, so 1 over 60, integral from 0 to infinity. So what we're going to end up with is, uh, as we said before, uh, sine a cosine b equals 1 half sine a plus b plus sine a minus b. So the first one is going to be sine of 17v plus sine of 15v, right? Then minus sine of 23v minus sine of 7v all over v cubed and there's a dv at the end but I don't have space to put that all right now we're going to do the same thing we're going to take the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over v cubed and we're going to take the Laplace transform of everything on the top so when we take the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over v cubed remember that the Laplace transform of t squared is 2 over s cubed so that means the in the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s cubed is 1 half t squared so we're going to end up with 1, 1 over 120 here and on the top we're going to end up with v squared and then we're going to end up with a big chain here so that's going to be 17 
over v squared plus 17 squared plus 15 over v squared plus 15 squared minus 23 over v squared plus 23 squared minus 7 over v squared plus 49 because I know what that is. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make some more space. So we have a pretty complex thing here, but we're going to be able to simplify it a lot. So for each of these, we basically have um, a v squared over v squared plus a squared. We're going to simplify all of these at once. So what we're going to do first is we're going to add plus a cubed and minus a cubed. And so what that's going to end up being is if we factor out v squared plus a squared, we'll end up with a minus a cubed over v squared plus a squared. So if we apply this to every single one of these, first we're going to end up with all these a's. So that's going to be 15 plus 17. And then everything will be negative for 23 and 7. So minus 23 minus 7, right? And if you do that math pretty quickly, that just is, oh, I'm sorry, I copied them, this all down wrong. This should not be 15 squared. This should be 13 squared and this should be 13. I'm sorry about that. So of course, uh, now all of this will end up just canceling and going to zero. So I'll just uh, clear that out. And then all we'll end up with is all these uh, terms that are minus a cubed over v squared plus a squared. So we'll end up with minus 13 cubed over v squared plus 13 squared, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then when we integrate this, so integral of a cubed over v squared plus a squared dv, we're going to end up dividing by a, so that's just going to be a squared arctangent of b over a. So we're going to end up with 1 over 120, a squared arctangent of v over a, evaluated at infinity and 0. And in this case, a is 13, 17, negative 23, negative 7, or 23, 7, right? It's just all of these. And for each of these, uh, when v is infinity, it's going to be pi over 2 times a squared, and when v is 0, it's just going to be 0. So we're going to end up with 1 over 120 times pi over 2 times all these a squareds, right? So we're going to end up with uh, negative 13 squared, because remember we have this negative sign because of the negative a cubed, minus 17 squared, plus 23 squared, plus 7 squared. Now I'm not going to do all this math in my head because I'm kind of lazy like that but we'll end up with pi over 240 times, um, I'm just gonna pull out a calculator real quick and do this on my calculator because I do not wanna do all those squared numbers in my head. I could, it would just take a little while. So uh, we're gonna have minus 169 minus 17 times 17 plus 23 times 23 plus 49. And voila, our answer is 120, which means that overall our answer is pi over 2. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I managed to cut it down to be pretty short, so I'm glad about that. Uh, I was actually suggested in another video to do the fourth Borwein integral, but <coughs> that one is just a little bit too much work for me to fit into a video easily. So I might find a way to do that, but uh, I think for now you guys are probably good with all this um, plugging and chugging with these uh, tough Laplace transform integrals. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.